And my name is Elva, and I am the director of Quechua Collective of New York. And I am also, I was also appointed as an ambassador of the Quechua language in New York. It's the first time I'm saying it. <laughs> why Boricha came to be. My inspiration came because I wanted two children from different cultures to, uh, to get to know each other from, you know, in their own languages and uh, how they uh, learn and share their own uh, cultures. Well, I wanted these two children to have uh, that experience of getting to know each other um, in sign language in whichever way they were able to communicate. Now, one of them is, of course, from uh, Okobamba. And the other one is from Lima, Peru, uh, who was visiting with uh, his uh, parents to Okobamba. Well, in our school, when I was a child, in our school, there were some stories, mostly stories like, um, you know, the old time stories of the children, like uh, Blanca Nieves. I don't know what else it was at that time. So, books that are actually I could not relate to because they didn't look like us, like me or anybody I knew. So actually, I didn't I like these books. I wanted to be more realistic. Ever since I was a child, I wanted to, to be more real. Uh, so... I actually did not read that many stories uh, in my childhood. The reason that I started writing uh, uh, stories in, um, in Quechua was because, um, see, I live in Brooklyn and in Brooklyn, there is this uh, central library, library of uh, Brooklyn. And I was kind of active in that library um, so this library was trying to form a, a part, a, a chapter, a, I, I don't know what to call it. Um, I mean, a group of people were interested in having an international uh, section so they can bring different books from different parts of the world. And I was part of that at that time. And uh, I was very glad because I wanted to see if we could bring um, books in uh, Spanish and also in Quechua. And this Quechua language was not even known by anybody. So I wanted to get people to know this language that exists in, in Peru and other parts of the world. Um, but um, something did happen in Lima with the rest of my family, and not in Lima, in uh, Queens. And uh, I moved to Queens for a while. Maybe I stayed in Queens for about five years. And when I came back after five years, I visited the library thinking, that I will find books in Quechua in this uh, part of the library. I was very excited. And when I got there, I looked and looked everywhere and I could not find any book. I only found one small little book that was called the Survival Quechua um, book, but that was very small. This, this small. And I was totally so, so disappointed and actually angry because I couldn't find any books in Quechua. So I decided to 
ask my family from Peru and Bolivia to send me books in Quechua so I can donate these books to the library. So when I started, um, when I got the books and I took the books to the library, they uh, rejected them. They say that uh, we don't have the budget to deal with this. So I'm sorry, we cannot take the books and this and that so much that I went few times to the library and spoke with the director, spoke with few other people. And um, we finally got them to accept about, um, I think about 30 books, all in Quechua. So I was very happy about that. But then, uh, what are we going to do with this book? Nobody will know about these books anywhere if we don't talk about it. So we came up with the idea of having uh, one Raimi Andino to introduce the existence of these books in the libraries and that people could uh, you know, read these books and at least get to know these books that they are available to, to the community. And uh, we had our first Raimi Andino that was on uh, 2012. At that time, we had our first Raimi Andino with music done by Inca Sonko at that time. Now, Inca Sonko is known as Inca Raiku. So we had nice music from the Andes, Mestizo music, Quechua music, and I was part of it. And we created this um, wonderful um, activity and introduced the books. And we talk about what Inca Cusisonco was all about and what these books were all about and stuff like that. So since then on, we started working with uh, uh, Inca Gusisonko, and we created Quechua Collective. Yeah, we still working hard trying to create more, more books and stuff like that in three languages now. Poricha was also in three languages at that time. It was a very big, great experience working with um, some um, people who supported us. At that time, some people from NYU, um, and we created also events to, to teach the language, Quechua language. And uh, we had uh, our uh, rhymes every two, three months. And we had also one event that uh, really was uh, very much enjoyed by the community. It was our uh, bingo night. The bingo night was, uh, the purpose of this uh, activity was to, to open up the Quechua language and learn the numbers in Quechua um, while we were playing bingo. So, you know, we, we did all of these things and, and I was very, very happy to do these things with uh, a lot of um, supporters. I was born in Apurimac in this community where the majority of people spoke this language, Quechua. And um, while we were in Chincheros, Apurimac, my my parents were very active in the community. My father was um, one time uh, nominated or elected to be judge in town. And um, people will bring their uh, um, complaints and their uh, concerns to him and to, to solve the problems between 
um, you know, husband and wife, between uh, their people who, the hacendados who people used to work for. Um, and, um, you know, they were, um, you know, my father was very much respected. And all of these uh, activities happened in Quechua language. And I was just a child, may, maybe about five years old. And nobody will even notice me, but I was there listening and watching what was going on in the town with people. And I just love to hear this language. Quechua for me is, is a wonderful, wonderful language. And uh, it's the language in which I was born. It's the language of my ancestors. It's the language of my parents, my grandparents, um, my, all my family, my relatives, my great grandparents, um, you know, spoke this language. So I was very much uh, familiar and curious to know more about it. At the year old, they took me to Lima and from Lima, immediately they took me to Chincheros. So my whole life up to uh, 14 years of uh, age, I lived there and I was very, very happy there. I mean, all my childhood that I spent there was just so wonderful because, you know, under that beautiful blue sky and the pure air, you know, and uh, where where I was free to go from uh, one place to another and and harvest uh, any fruits or vegetables that were there, because I that's why I I love these things. I love the fruits. I love the vegetables and I love animals because I also raised my own chicken. I raised my own piggies and, um, you know, I was very happy. I lived there uh, a, a wonderful, happy childhood with my sisters and, and my family. So I, I, there I loved the, uh, you know, I learned to sing with them, with the community, from the community, listening to them. And um, yeah, the music is very much deep engraved in me because uh, my father used to play uh, music. He used to play the mandolin and the guitar. And, uh, uh, you know, People in Chincheros love to do parandas, you know, uh, carnival times. They will go on the streets dancing and singing, and it was just wonderful. And um, that's what I, what I learned from this community. It's uh, our heritage. I'm not gonna say that I, <laughs> I don't appreciate all the things that I learned and I took from um, New York and the United States. However, I miss my country. I miss my town where I grew up. I miss my family, my culture. I miss all of that. And uh, up to now, I'm still, you know, I still miss it. And I go back to Peru every occasion when I can. At the beginning when I started working um, with uh, Quechua and people that I met in the way, uh, I thought that uh, Quechua was dying because that's the way um, people, you know, in government, people presented the Quechua. The Quechua is a dying language and this and this and that. But since that time until now, I have seen a transformation. I have seen 
a movement of people who love this culture, Peruvian culture, a culture from the Andes. I, you know, and, uh, and more and more people are traveling to know Cusco, Apurima, Cayacucho, um, everywhere. And uh, I think Quechua is never going to die. Uh, not, you know, I'm working hard to preserve it. That we're creating books, we're creating, uh, revitalizing by doing, uh, you know, singing, dancing, and uh, writing poems, writing riddles, writing stories. Um, and I, I think um, people are more and more um, uh, appreciative about this language, no matter where you come from. I think um, we are not just uh, people from Peru or Quechua speakers. We are embracing anyone who is interested in getting to know this language and culture. So we will continue working as hard as we can to continue do that, to do that, to welcome everybody.